do have Maverick. It's right there. If you see it, it's behind the counter. Um, I'm assuming they're worried about people taking it, maybe because it's an exclusive. Okay, everyone, so right now I just got done with work. I'm gonna go walk down the street. Literally, I'm just gonna go walk down the street, maybe about 15, uh, under 15 minutes. I'm gonna go to the shopping mall that's really close by to my workplace. Uh, simply because I haven't been to Toys R Us for ages. And there is a Toys R Us really just literally <laughs> just around the corner from where I work at. And I've seen on the forums, they actually have stock of the new Transformers uh, cone heads. They've also got the, um, what is it? I think they got the Maverick, they said. Also the Gigawatt from Back to the Future. So I'll be kind of interested to see what kind of prices they have over there. So I figured I'm gonna go take a walk. Although I already bought them, you already probably all seen it on the review. I've got them already. I just wanted to see what Toys R Us has to offer lately because it's been a while. So literally less than 15 minutes, maybe 10 minutes walk to the shopping mall just around the corner from the office I work at. My idea, one more thing is, um, if you just ignore all the political things that go around, I, of course, every state and country has their own politics. Hong Kong really isn't that bad of a place to be living at, simply because everything is really convenient, um, easy to be accessible, like toy shops, re uh, restaurants, uh, transportation is one of the easiest things. If you don't want to have your own car, it's actually better not to drive around here and just take public transportation pretty quick. But again, like I said, of the mentioned living here, your downside is you get a small living space for a very high price of rental if you are coming out a little a little hallway over there. On the top, you can see there's a sign. It's called Mong Kok East Rail Station. And there we have Moko straight ahead. Once we come out, it definitely looks like, let's see here, we got a bunch of people, probably sales, probably selling some real estate. That's one of the big things. When you see a bunch of people dressed up in suits holding flyers, you know what they're trying to do. They're trying to sell you property. All you gotta do is just keep walking past them and they'll leave you alone. And there it is, the whole big sign, MoCo. Mind you, one thing you should understand is that a lot of people in here in Hong Kong do appreciate a lot of Japanese culture. They like a lot of Japanese products. So in turns, a lot of times, uh, big brand name items, or you could say buildings, like shopping malls and whatnot, would actually have a kind of Japanese name to it similar to like Sogo, Aeon, which are actually uh, branded Japanese places, in fact. Some of you who haven't been to Hong Kong before and will be coming here later in the future, this is what the Moko Mall looks like. Um, it's basically, I think, what is it? It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think it's eight floors of um, shops, pretty much. And you're, you're looking at pretty much, you can find the branded names, obviously, here are gonna be the branded names. And anything, pretty much, that you see in the shopping mall in the States, they're gonna have, and probably much, much, much more. And as you can see on the top, there it is. The Toys R Us is on the one, two, three, third floor. So I'm going up to the third floor now. As it being a weekday, it's not that busy, which is a good thing because on weekends when it's really crowded, you just don't really want to be around, you know, brushing up and being pushed around sometimes. But overall, in general, not too bad today. Really quiet, especially since I guess you could say everyone is still like, you know, we're all, we're all kind of still uh, getting accustomed to the whole wear the mask, be careful of germs, uh, COVID thing. I'm, it, it's still a pretty, it's pretty still serious. In fact, Hong Kong right now, they're predicting that there might be like a fourth wave coming soon, which God, I hope that's not, does not happen. It's just been too much already. So I hope that they can like leave us, leave us alone, please. You can take a look, if you guys can see through the video, the customer service even has a plastic barrier. They're not taking any chances. Those ladies in customer service are like, I ain't coming out. You don't need to ask me for service. I'm just gonna talk right here between the two glass the, or plastic, you know, reinforced barriers, which I'm not sure how much that's gonna help. Needs restaurant, passing by. Toilet on the top. If you need to go take a leak, there you go. And here we go. We have Toys R Us right next to a Japanese restaurant. Huh? We were talking about Japanese just a minute ago, how it's uh, really, really keen on what they like around here for the culture. All right, Toys R Us, right here. Shop 320B. Hey, I thought that was gonna be in front of me. Man, I gotta keep walking. Oh boy, gotta go around the corner. Let's take a look. Whoop. Oh boy. This level apparently has a lot of children wear, so it just is a custom that you'd have a Toys R Us on this level. Um, pretty much, I think you could see um, from just looking at the video here. We got Beanie Baby, Nature's Purist, uh, okay, that's for uh, that's for ladies in labor. Okay, maybe I'll 
I, mean, I should cut that one out later in this little shopping vid. Somewhat shopping vid. Let's see. Artistic studios. More like educational stuff. I don't think we're going to find what I'm looking for. Or I'm not actually looking to buy anything today. I just want to check out really what Toys R Us has. Oh, hey, check this out. There's a new shop in here. There's, uh, it's like one of those a little bit of everything shops, but it's probably gonna have a little bit of everything in the price as well. So you don't wanna touch these shops. Mainly when you're in Hong Kong, you kind of avoid these shops as much as the plague because they're not gonna have the prices you're looking for and definitely not the things you're looking for as well. Ah, uh, here we go. Oh, you know what, that's huge. Actually, I think this is the first time I've been here. Okay, we got half off from the 29th to the, uh, okay. So you got a good month, whole of October to November uh, of a 50% off. I don't know what deal it is. We'll check out and see what it is in a moment. Let's take a look. VTech, Lego. Um, let's see. It's not like super huge, but it's okay. Lego sets on the side. Looking at least two exclusive items, which I've been told. Oh, okay, here we go. Ah. All right, here we go. We got it over here. Here's the Siege. Let's see. And on the side, what are we looking at? Okay, we got the Seekers. We got Megatron. Cliff Jumper. Um, let's see. A couple others. I see Shockwave. I see the Studio Series. Let's see if they have the... Let's see if they have on the other side anymore. Hmm. Nope. Okay, we got Gundam kits. A bunch of Gundam kits. Got Ghetto Gegger in right there and all that stuff. Anything else? Is that it? Are you serious? Okay, we got some more of these type of, uh, what is this, Sentinel-1? All right, so we got some of those one, I think they're three and a quarter scales, those G.I. Joe sort of wannabe characters. And then we got the Marvel Legends series right here. What do we have? X-Men, nothing, nothing particularly that we're looking for. Oh boy, jeez. Maybe it's behind the counter. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go check the counter. Maybe. Get back. Here we go. We do see something. Um, what do we see? Okay, we see Transformers Battle Call. We got the Seeker Pack, two pack. That's 600 bucks, man. And then here we got Masterpiece version of Starscream. I don't know how much you're asking for that. Um, holy moly! Because I know in the states it's actually discounted, right? Right now that's 14.99. You're looking at about. Wow, that's well, that's almost 200 US bucks, man. And then here, okay, okay, finally we got, we got Skylinks. Actually, I've been, I think somebody was asking about Skylinks. I'm thinking to myself, should I help him pick one up? Because I'm not sure for that price. Because this is like, that's over 100 US dollars right there, 7.99. Do have Maverick? It's right there if you see it. It's behind the counter. Um, I'm assuming they're worried about people taking it, maybe because it's an exclusive item. I don't see Gigawatt though, but they do have Maverick. That's 3.99 Hong Kong. Right, so pretty much they don't have gigawatt as you saw they just had the maverick uh top gun uh right behind the counter there's plenty of those i guess it's not really a sold off after item here in hong kong actually to be honest only yeah i actually i can pretty much guarantee you that maverick isn't really as all sold after you all saw the review you saw how it looked if you're a really diehard fan of the top gun then you might pick it up but other than that it's just it's just it is what it is. In any case, I'm gonna go ahead and make more, maybe one more round. Um, not here, but I'm probably gonna go check Sino Center out. So, just stay tuned, guys. Okay, everyone. So right now I'm on my way to the Sino Center, as you all normally see me sometimes go to, to make my daily rounds of shops. Again, as I uh, mentioned all the time, everything is really convenient. I mean, you could just sell. It just came from Toys R Us, and it's not but just five, five to ten minutes more. I'm walking down the street. And I'm going right to the Sino shopping building where they have all those small toy shops inside. Okay, well, so basically I'm in the Sino Center right now. And uh, I'm back here behind me at the Animes Pro Shop. Uh, the shop over here where you saw me before pick up those He-Man figures. That was a while back actually. The, um, oh, is it Mondo? Uh, this time I picked up something else a bit interesting. I thought this is pretty cool. This is something that's called the Villa. Um, very cool uh, company. Uh, this is like a one in six scale figure. 
You're looking at this is like a six inch scale figure, a Joe figure, except it's got more detailing. A female figure was an M4 carbine, I believe. Uh, looked pretty cool. I, I wanted to pick this up because I didn't actually have anything of that sort, period. And I thought that would really go together later down the line when I do some other reviews. But actually, I kind of want to review this Victor figure because it actually looks pretty cool. You'll see it in a moment, though. Okay, everyone. So I'm back in the office right now. And you all saw from that just previous video that there was not that much over there at that Hong Kong Toys R Us and located in the Moku Shopping Center just down the street from the office. And the only thing they had was pretty much that Maverick Top Gun. And as you all saw from the review, I think that pretty much everyone would take the better of the choice would be the Gigawatt from Back to the Future. In fact, there was no more Gigawatt there. I'm sure there probably are some others uh, in other locations of uh, Toys R Us around Hong Kong. But uh, for myself, again, like I mentioned, I already got it. I just wanted to see if they had it around here just for just for the heck of it. In case uh, you all are wondering as well, okay, I did pick up a, a couple of other things this week that I, which I did not take the video of, of where I went to go shopping. Uh, I went back to Wan Chai Freeway and all those uh, other shops that you see me in previous videos, and I did pick up a couple more things. Uh, for G.I. Joe fans, I did get the Retro Wave. You can see here, I did pick up the His Tank. They roughly were selling at about uh, 250 Hong Kong dollars, which roughly equates to about a little bit, almost coming close to 30 US dollars, maybe a little bit more, uh, give or take a few. So we got the His Tank here. Um, in limited numbers, there wasn't like a huge amount. I just got two of these myself. And I also bought the Retro Wave. This time I got actually the second wave, which was uh, Scarlet right here. I got uh, Roadblock and we got Death Row. These actually roughly sold for a set. They actually sold over a set. They don't really like to sell individual ones because the shopkeepers know that if they sell individual, they're gonna have a whole bunch of stock left that they can't sell out. So they sold it only as a set. You couldn't buy them individually. This cost me roughly about 60, yeah, it's about 20 US dollars a piece. It breaks it down to. So again, average price, nothing special. Again, like I said, always tell you that Hasbro stuff does not come cheap. We only get 30 third party company items or exclusive items. But again, we're not paying, you don't get like huge discounts on branded stuff here, guys. And I finally also got a beachhead. We <laughs> I, we still actually have some reminiscence of some G.I. Joe classified lines here. So we did. I did finally get the beachhead. Didn't pay too much. This was about 250. So again, it's about the same price I paid for the Cobra His Tank. Uh, luckily, I got one beachhead. I think it's probably maybe the only beachhead left here in Hong Kong. And what you just saw earlier, was I just picked up this one and I found out more about this figure is that this is actually another Hong Kong company similar to Hot Toys. Hot Toys, as you know, is like one of the leading toy makers of the one and six scale. This is called uh, Very Cool and it's a Hong Kong company as well. And they're doing, they're also doing one and six scale, but they're actually now going into the one and one and 12th line. So it's a six inch like Joe figures, but in super detail. You're going to pay a pretty penny for this if you buy this. This actually cost 450 Hong Kong dollars. So again, you're looking, you're looking almost, um, wow, yeah, you're looking close to 58 US bucks if you're gonna get these kind of figures. But this is the first one I bought. I'm thinking about probably reviewing it together with maybe a Joe or so because I definitely wanna see the comparison in quality and you all wanna see it too. I know you guys do, I know you guys do. Also, I forgot, also, yeah. I also picked up for Marvel fans, we got the Hellfire Club in the brown box and uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna review this or not because I know there's been a lot of reviews already. Let me know in the comments below if you do want me to review this or any other things like the retro line uh if you want me to review it let me know in the comments below because i'm still thinking whether or not i should do this review since there's been a lot of reviews for it also on a short note i want to give out a shout out to chris and casey they reached me out on instagram these are two guys who are really cool they are apparently comic book illustrators and they're doing a kickstarter funding right now for a special comic book uh the pursuit of plastic uh, you guys can take a look at it there's a short clip right here and basically Basically, these guys have developed a comic book for, let's say, collectors like us to show an adventure through a story behind their eyes of how these two comic book characters, which they created, go around and you could say fighting bad guys or whatnot, but they're also, I think, in pursuit of the best figure or whatnot. I'm not sure how the storyline is going to turn out, but they need some help for the Kickstarter. And it's not a lot. It's only, they're only looking at 2K and they're almost there. 2K US bucks. I'm going to give them a small backing. It's, I would just, you know, if you all like their comic book, you should give them backing too. It's up to you guys, but I'll leave a link in the description below for their Kickstarter. All right. So that's going to do it for this video. I hope you all like it. Again, let me know what you all think about reviews and please don't forget to subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, I'm Mr. Stan. I'll see you all on the next video.